Hey guys, today I want to do something really fun with you, and we're going to be working with Inventable's program called Easel. Now, Easel is absolutely free. They do have a pro version that you can pay monthly, but we're not looking at that. We're just looking at their free version here. Now, this will produce G code, and G code can be used on your CNC, or personally, I have the CNC called E3 from Bob CNC. When I get done designing this project, I'll save it as a G code file, then use Universal G code Cinder to cut it out. Come holiday season, we like to buy this Aspen apple cider mix, and it's for the guests when we have them over, but you can find it at Hallmark stores, and it's quite the hit of the party. But this year, I want to design a decorative wooden mat to reside under these thermos pumps. I've spent some time designing a bar mat of sorts in Microsoft Paint. I started with a background border, then a crisscross pattern for a background, and added some text. I also added a relief cut at the top of this, so the thermos could scoot up closer. I'm using Google Chrome, doesn't really matter. Um, go ahead and open up Easel. It's free to sign up an account. And then Easel's great because it remembers all of your past projects. So here you can see a lot of the things that I've done in the past. And uh, it's a really simple program. I really like it. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's do a new project. So select it here. And here is where the image will actually come in and we're going to import into. Over here is giving you a preview of what it's going to look like. So the first thing, let's go ahead and hit import, and then image trace. Now we want to hit upload file. Then go ahead and click on uh, choose file. You can do drag file as well, but uh, I'm going to do it that way. And we'll select our sign here. Now then once it goes ahead and loads, you're going to notice one thing. This outer line, that was what I was going to cut it out on. It's pretty much faded and gone. So we're going to have to mess with the threshold to bring it back into view. We're going to try to get it so the whole line shows up. And that's looking pretty good there. Let me do smoothing. And that is pretty close. So I'll go ahead and you can do invert and that would do the absolute opposite. It would cut out all that's black and leave all that's white. We won't do that. Or we could do trace outlines and you could do that as well. Again, we won't be doing that today. So we'll just go ahead and hit import. Now the first thing I want to do is enlarge the image to a width of 10 inches. Next, I've tried some test cuts before shooting this and found the lettering to be a little thin. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this text and use the text generator inside Easel to provide us with a little bit better text. There are different ways we can cut our lines on the path, outside, and inside. All of these provide completely different results depending on thickness of the lines and how scrunched things are. For this project, I'll be choosing outside as this provided the best look in all of my testing. Next, I use the slider bar to set the cut depth, or in layman's terms, the deepest I want the bit to cut, down to 0 0.03, or also known as 132nd. Something I use constantly when setting up cuts is a fraction to decimal sheet. A Google image search has plenty to pick from, and I always have one next to my PC at all times. If we take a look under the Shape tab, we have the option to set the width and the height of any object selected. Also, we're able to set the position of where you want to zero your workpiece. Now let's select wood type, and I'm using oak, but it's not an option. So I'll choose walnut, as it's another similar hardwood. Next, we move on to bits. You'll notice a list of choices to choose from here. Easel was never set up to allow V-bits, but using a V-bit with the 132nd bit selected provides an excellent result. Easel Pro now offers V-bits as an option, but with that tip, you just saved yourself an Easel Pro monthly fee. Under Cut Settings, it shows the recommended feed rates for the material you selected. Personally, I find the speeds they recommend to be too fast. In hardwoods, I like the feed rate of about 15 to 20. Again, this is how fast the CNC is going to push your moving a bit around on the workpiece. A plunge rate of 15 does great, and this is how fast the bit will lower down into the wood making a cut. You'll quickly learn the speeds your CNC likes, and will bump it up and slow it down depending on the material you're using. Here you see the material dimensions. Measure your board and drop these numbers into X and Y. 
the system will update the preview with a board that size. Below that, you'll have a Z axis. Z is your thickness of the board. I personally use a digital caliper to measure my boards as I found it more accurate. If we click simulate, it'll give us the projected path it's going to cut, as well as tell us how long it's going to take to cut it all out. Now that our piece is complete, we're now ready to build this file into a G code that our CNC machine can read. To do this, we go up to Machine, Advanced, then click Generate G code. Now click Export G code. This will save a file to our Downloads folder. Now that we have this file, we can rename it and we're ready to take it out to the CNC machine and cut it out. At the CNC machine, I open Universal G-Code Cinder. Next, we need to click the Connection button. Then we need to click the H dollar sign to home it. Once homed, I browse for the G-Code file and select it. I verify the dimensions are correct and begin zeroing the CNC to make sure my project is fully on the board and won't run into my hold downs. All that's left to do is to press the play button to start the cut. I like to keep the mouse over the pause button at all times should I need to stop the project but have the ability to start it again without having to start all over.